put me in the middle or put me on the window? I can take aisle. Pink, do you want window? I really don't give a shit. Well, you should probably be in the window one if you're going to film, because then you can actually shoot out the window. We're all going to film it. Oh, yeah, and then I can film you guys, too. Yeah, we're all going to just vlog on our phones when we can. I'll just sleep on it. Well, they're all open. Just do, like... Pink, I need to know which one you pick. So I can select my seat. Fine. F*** it. I'm going 31. Oh, God. I'm 31 aisle. I'm going 31 aisle because you're not answering me. 31D. Which one are you going with? Pink, how analytical is well those seat selection? Dude, it's pretty it doesn't cool. matter. I'm trying to just pick a seat so we can move on to the next flight. Next 34B. Okay, I'm 34C, you're 34A. What's happening? These boys need to act like they've been there before. Yes, we have. I was just looking for a response. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I, I never changed. We're, um... Nothing. Apparently I can talk <laughs> We're getting some ticks. Some tickets here. So this one is... As a group? Generally? Speaking? to an undisclosed location. <laughs> yes, this is going to be very entertaining. It's going cool just well right now. Can't wait to see you guys travel together. I'm not worried about that part. <laughs> Are you concerned, Pink? No. The last time I flew on a plane like this, I laid across an entire aisle. <laughs> D1 basketball you... player props. Yeah. Not was it a private jet, yo? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, geez. That's what we're getting anyway. <laughs> yeah, was it a private jet? Yeah. <laughs> we begin deep in the Northwoods, in the heart of cabin country, USA, in an area of lakes frozen in time, lost from the development of civilization. Hidden beneath a blanket of towering pines and nestled between hundreds of miles of logging roads is an area of Minnesota littered with trophy crappie potential. We call this place the Golden Triangle. Named for its location near the massive watersheds of Cass, Winnie, and Leech Lakes and also for the unmistakable color of the fish that swim here. But lastly, and most importantly, for its reputation of producing the craziest sunset bites you will ever see. Pick. Oh yeah, oh, baby. Man. Look at that thing. Boom, let's go. That's a mule. And that was, I mean, that was probably the most crazy 30 minutes band we've ever documented. Dude, that was way crazy. All right, so we're gonna do a little bit of cooking. Our game plan was to get on the ice this evening. Um, didn't really work out. We finally got all of our crap ready to go and it started getting dark already. We still had to drive to the lake, so we just abandoned ship. We're coming up with a new game plan, but first we're gonna eat some food. So luckily we smashed the fish out there on bowstring and we still have a ton of meat. So the goal tonight, put together this baller dinner. It's gonna be a chilaquiles with fresh crappie, literally straight out of the lake right in front of our cabin. And uh, we're going to use some of this fresh produce here, get this going. But I got a pan full of fillets right here. I'm going to get seasoned up with some catch and cook. We're going to do kind of a blackened fish. And then I'll show you how to put chilaquiles together with some salsa verde. And we're going to eat this up and it's going to be delicious. Here we go. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is cut up a little bit of this produce. I got some uh, garlic, onion, and cilantro that I'm gonna I'm gonna mince the garlic and uh, the onion up fairly small, and then just rough chop that cilantro. 
I'm gonna start cooking that in a pan with a little bit of oil. And then I'm gonna add, I got some salsa verde that I'm gonna dump in there. We're gonna cook the salsa down with that stuff in it just for a little bit of time. And that's kind of the beginning of this. So I'm gonna start doing that. And then we're gonna blacken the fish kind of at the exact same time, just so everything finishes about the same time. And then you know, put it together. So get to cutting here and then I'll see you at the stove. Okay, so I'm gonna get this salsa going. So like I said, I'm gonna cook down the garlic and the onions first, and then I'm gonna add the salsa verde in there and then finish it with some cilantro and lime juice. Um, it should get really thin once you start cooking it down because it's gonna start to boil a little bit, but just try not to burn the garlic because that's the biggest thing. You don't want it to get bitter, but cook that garlic and onions down. They don't need to be all caramelized. They just need to be slightly translucent and start to get melted down. So I'll put a little oil in this pan and just pretty much shove it all in. Okay, so I got a pan of crappie fillets here. I'm not using a blackening seasoning, but I'm gonna use a little bit of cumin, and then I'm also gonna double down with some catch and cook all-terrain. I really really like this one. It's got some zip to it, but it's just a really good kind of deep flavored seasoning for doing blackening or any kind of uh, other like taco type stuff. So uh, I'm gonna go in with the all-terrain first and then the cumin second. So I'm gonna put it on pretty heavily. All right, so I'm only gonna season one side of the fish for this. So we're gonna put this on there lay them all flat down in the pan in, in some oil. Uh, we don't want to put this in a dry pan or you'll definitely mace yourself out big time. So um, I'm gonna put this in there. They're gonna cook for probably two to three minutes on one side. I'll just flip them over one time just to finish cooking them and then we'll pull them off. So they cook really fast. So the salsa should be done right about the same time. All right, so I'm gonna get this fish dropping in. I'm just gonna do them kind of in batches so I don't overcrowd the pan here, but I got this oil hot and cast iron. Got the seasoned side, the unseasoned side a couple pieces at a time. Like I said, I'm just gonna cook them like three quarters of the way on one side and one quarter of the way on the other side. If you only really need to season one side, you're pretty much just gonna get overpowered with the seasoning and the oil will take that seasoning in so it'll all get all over it anyway. Whew, that smells good. All right, so these fillets have been cooking for about two minutes, about a minute and a half on one side and about 30 seconds on the other side. You can see they got this really nice dark crust on them where that seasoning just kind of getting cooked onto the outside. It's exactly what you want. So now I'm just gonna pull them off and get them on a plate and I'm gonna run through the rest of that pan, just get that batch done. And uh, as soon as they're all ready, we'll start getting plated up here. That salsa is cooked down really nice over there. And last thing we gotta do is get the chips in it. So I got all the fish done. I got this salsa still just simmering. And uh, I'm just going in with some chips. Uh, you can make chips, you can dump the chips in either way. The chips are gonna get soggy. You're cooking them in salsa, so I just bought some uh, nice chips here. I'm just gonna load up this pan. And then just start mixing them literally right into the salsa. So you just put as many as you can get in there. And then just start getting that salsa coated in all your chips. Give it like two minutes and it'll start to drink it all up. And what you want is that chips to just start absorbing all the liquid in there. And then you're good, we're gonna plate it up. All right, last thing I like to do is put a nice runny yolk egg on top of this thing. So I'm just gonna fry an egg real quick while this is kind of just soaking all that goodness up. And then that'll go right on top, let that yolk just run down over everything. It'll be delicious. All right, so we're gonna plate one up. I got this all ready to go here. so. Those chips you can see are kind of starting to absorb all that. It's kind of, I don't know, soggy, I guess, is what you're, the goal you're looking for here. But I'm gonna go in with just a little pile of chips with some of that salsa right in the middle of the plate. Then I'm gonna do some of that blackened fish that we did. Awesome crappie fillets right on top of this bad boy. Then I'm gonna put some crema on top. It's kind of like a thinned out sour cream kind of thing. Just drizzle that over the whole thing. A little bit of fresh cilantro. And now I'm gonna put that egg right on top. You wanna just make sure that yolk stays nice and runny. That baby right on top of there. A little bit of crumbled queso fresco over the whole thing. And just a little squeeze of lime juice. And that right there is a black and crappie chilaquiles. And the whole point of this thing is with that runny yolk, you just wanna break this thing and just let that run down over the whole dish right there. 
and this is going to be freaking bomb. Heck yeah. Whoa. That is like a flavor explosion. A man of many words. Dude, that's <laughs> so good. Like, whoa. <laughs> So we just went out there and whipped those crappies this afternoon and now we're crushing them on the dinner plate right now, which is super dope. And uh, this is an awesome way to make crappies. I don't think it's probably something that a lot of people do. You can use a lot of different types of fish for this, but it's cool with crappies because the meat's pretty thin, super fast cooking, and uh, you can whip together a dish like this in just a little while. And it looks awesome too. This is a really good one to make for groups of people and stuff like that, but it's super delicious. Unreal way to, to cook crappies. Dude, this is incredible. This All right, be my new favorite. We got a bunch of fish sitting back here that we got to plate up, and uh, I think we're gonna smash these, and then uh, we're gonna we're gonna do some fishing. I swear to God, we're gonna do some fishing here. But we're gonna get to eating first, and then we got a game plan coming for the morning. All right, like Pink said, we're gonna crush some food. Waldo's already munching down. He says it's his new favorite, which is big because that pizza yesterday. I don't know. Everything meshes together. That pizza was phenomenal. This is gonna be great. I'm excited to eat it. But we're going to get after it in the morning. We're going giant hunting. We're looking for bigs. It's going to be a lot of fun. And also, if you're looking for some of this Crappie Chronicles merch, the stuff from last year is currently on sale. Yeah. And you can get stuff from Merch Drop 1 until this trip's over. So go get you some, but we'll see you in the morning. Like, all those still sick. He's waiting for the minnow. All of a sudden, I felt that fan. But I didn't know there was a fan there. So I thought, like, I thought he had some leakage. Oh, I thought I just freaking went. And I literally I seized up and I was like. <laughs> I'm not doing good right now. Pinkala got me sick, and I thought it was fine yesterday, and it just hit me like a freight train at like five in the morning, so today will be a struggle. You'll see Waldo perched on a tree in a little Waldo nest, and it's not gonna be good. So we're out on a new lake. We have never been here before. So what that means is we look at our Lake Master chips and turn on live and we just go poke around until we find light. Oh, there's a fish. There is actually a fish. On him. <laughs> One hole. Just a little over. Okay, I'm not marking. Like right on the bottom. Okay. I mean, they're there. I am marking something on the bottom. I just didn't know if they were suspended or not. Okay. Back up. This line, 45 to. Well, now they're on. They're moving. Holy balls! Whatever that is is not small. It's big. Dude, the hook set was just. Oh. I don't think there's a no, gill. Is it a largemouth or a giant crappie? That was a solid hook set though. He just looked like, oh, that's you shaking. I thought that was a fish shake. No, it's just his arthritis. Yeah. <laughs> it could be a walleye. It was right on bottom. I mean, I've seen that live. It's a lot of head shakes. Fighting like a bass though. No, it's a lot of head shakes in the bass. Just 
Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh! We will never get the bullet. Kill me! We'll find out. Got one. Crappie. Is it? Yep. Just a little one. They did engage on that pinhead pretty hard, though. First one. Little guy. That's the first one. All right, on the board. I think there were some big ones in there, though. Right. No, my line just snapped. Whatever I set the hook into was not small. That rod pancaked. All just got broke off. So I'm gonna go retie. Um, that one I had a four millimeter drop XL in the pink and white color. So that guy right there. I like using these when we're chasing big crappies. It's got a little bit bigger gap. There's more distance in between the hook point and the actual line tie. And if you look, it's a lot taller than that tie too. But one thing that I really like to do is I'll take my pliers and let's see here. I'll go like this. And I'll bend it back so it's standing vertical, so it's straight up and down. And then I'll take the hook. I'll take my pliers like this. I flex it just enough. And what that does is it gives it an offset. So now that hook point's not in line with that line tie. It gives you a better hookup ratio. What I'm going to do is I'm going glow. The reason why I'm going glow is because it's pretty bright out right now. And for whatever reason, they were turning down black earlier. So normally... They're turning around like a natural dark color. I like to switch things up a little bit. So right now, I'm gonna go with a glow whammy. I'm gonna cut it down just a hair to give it a blunt end. So now it's just got that blunt end right there. I'm gonna thread that on first. Cause I still want a pretty beefy profile, you know. Stained water, you can get away with uh, a little bit more of a uh, a bulkiness to your presentation so booyah now we're ready we have a nice bulky setup and that's going to push a lot of, of water all those appendages are going to help with water movement which when you're fishing stained water can really help out quite a bit so find out feels like a bluegill That's a crappie. Little crappie. My first one of the day. Little guy. Still marking. So get down. Good old pinhead. I'm all those are odd. Little one. I came up and grabbed it. This feels better. Well, they got a lot of spunk. That's a crappie. Little guy. <clears throat> now that I've fought these other crappies, I'm about 90% sure that that one I hooked was a crappie. The big one? Yes. Because these guys fight the exact same way. They're just smaller. They're very spunky. I will say those ones I've gotten to eat, the only time I've gotten one to eat is when there's multiple on marking. I think there's a lot of fish in this here. We just gotta figure out where the biggest ones are. I know. In the group. It, seems like it's got a little meat. It doesn't. Yeah, it's not big. It didn't fold your rod over. Mm -mm. No, he came really far on the hook set. Oh, there's a little biggest one today. Little crap. Crap eye. Thick. Yeah, it's built. It'd be nice to see a big one out of here. Built to the hill. Great. Little guy. Probably like a nine and a half incher. <laughs> And they're gone. Yeah. 
There's a nice little crappie. I got that one on Griff's rod. I was just sitting here doing some tight line. Nice thing about Griff's rod is you can either watch your line or we put a, a light action cut down trip wire so it's not incredibly soft but it still kind of bends with the rod blank a little bit. So it's kind of a twofer on there. Something just showed up halfway down, just a brick, and I was like, <laughs> That's a gill. Another oh. little crappie. Another little one. Not too shabby. Hooked up. Oh, it's a little bigger. 10 incher. Saw a little one. They're still down there, so I'm just going to put them back and get right back down. Another little one. All right. We're getting them to sit still, but we need some bigs now. These are freaking dinkers. Just another little guy. Little guy. Another little one. Well. Right now we're catching a bunch of these little dinks. So the boys are starting to spread out a little bit. I got a feeling we're gonna need to make a big move here. And you know, a lot of times when you're giant hunting, it's uh, it's not just little moves, sometimes it's big moves. So we're going to be moving probably to the other end of this basin. Um, a lot of times when we're out in these basins, what we're looking for is like an area of difference, whether it being an inside turn, a steeper break, a flat. Um, so it's just a process of elimination. You know, sometimes you just got to pick one and start and you just, you know, cross everything off the list. And then once you find one that's working, you try to duplicate it. So we're going to keep moving around here and hopefully we can get on some larger fish. On. Solid, yeah. Come on. There we go. Another one, probably about a nine and a half on the pinhead that time. Still down there. Still down there. Let's see what we got here. Feels the same, but it's actually smaller. <laughs> yeah, they fight hard. I'd like to see a 14. But they're aggressive. They're eating that pinhead like that. Okay, update. Uh, the basin we were in had all little fish. Bunch of little eaters. If you're gonna keep like nine to 10 inches. Yeah, but there's a lot of nines. A lot of nines. Um, so we need to make a big, move, a big move now. And what's nice this year is we have a good old sled and ATV from Polaris and Mies Outland. So that makes things a lot easier. So I think we're gonna Baja to the other side of the lake and go check that out because this seems like a lot of little fish. Cool Except for that donk you lost. Except for the donk I lost. That's on par <laughs> for this series if you watch. I'm, I'm good for like two or three a year. So just getting them out of the way early. Probably a good idea. Based on where we'll eventually be. <laughs> the 
This sucked. We're leaving. No, we looked around. We just found small ones, and then we're like, we'll look around the rest of the lake, and we didn't see any fish, so we're going to go somewhere else. Hey, do you have a toe strap? Why? I'm stuck. Waldo's not in the car right now, so. Okay, well, just make sure you have one before you leave there, because they might have one in that hardware area. We're going to try to get it out, but you, you're going to laugh when you get here. We're for sure stuck. <laughs> okay. okay. Okay, bye. <laughs> Unimpressed. All right. Everybody, here we go. Uh, yeah. Wait, I gotta save my coffee. Absolute delicious coffee. We're jumping lakes, but can't get on this one because we decided to get stuck, so need some energy to keep us going. Big guns. That's how we do that. Update, we are on our new lake. Much bigger lake, big lake, big crappies. However, a lot of water to cover. So we got the machines out here, got a bunch of ice, and we got the Mega Live down. And we're just gonna go try to, we're just gonna try to find activity, honestly, more than anything. We got a nice cloudy day, which helps um, keep us concealed on really clear water lakes. And we're hoping we can get around some life, either now or towards sunset too, but it's looking like it could get good. Place you know them for some freaks. Hopefully we can get one. Park, park. Seven feet off bottom. Six feet off bottom. Swear to God, if you lose this one, you're going down the hole. I mean, he's got to show up. Then we got a 50-50 chance. He's here. He's here. Just shut up. Oh my god. Yep. That was a good one. Got him. Come on, baby. Come on. Please. Be he feels not good. Oh, oh it's a big wow. perch. <laughs> <laughs> well. Oh, oh, that looks so good. Dang it, no. We thought that was our big one. <laughs> We've been strolling around out here in basins for like two hours. And they're all screaming away from us. And we finally had one rolling in we thought was going to be it. And uh, it's his perch. It is so a that's, very, it that's is sweet. A very nice perch. It's a very nice perch. Sorry, buddy. This isn't what we're looking for. Back to it. Oh boy. Yeah, when we made that joke and all of a sudden I'm jigging, I just brick rat. Here he is. Show oh up my and god. I'm like, oh my god, he's here. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, perch. Wow. We're going to this spot. Update. Brought to you by lights. Not quite, but <laughs> alright. Catch and cook. Uh, <laughs> no, so, this, yeah, this lake's been tough. Fish are flying around. We haven't really. We've seen a bit of fish, but it hasn't been that great. But we're taking a little mental break, eating some snacks, and uh, we're gonna keep running and gunning. So, sometimes we don't catch them, and that's right now. But, in a little bit, it won't be, right? Right, right, right? No. We're about to get them. Hello. Tree perch.
can purge smash fresh over here. Perch. It's a nice perch too. Nice little perchy. That one came out on the pinhead pro. I was just pounding it there on the bottom. Still no crappies yet, but Bart's gonna look around with the Mega Live, you know, one more time. Hopefully we'll find something, see something. And hopefully if we do find something, we can actually move and catch them. Because that has been the impossible task for today. They don't seem to like us very much. Doesn't matter if we walk, ride, drill, point live imaging at them. Whatever we do, they spook. It is freaking brutal. Ooh, look at that giant walleye. Mean little guy eating the pinhead. All right, good morning everybody. Today is the last day and we're hoping it's gonna go pretty well. But right now it is like 6.30 in the morning. We're gonna finish packing up and hopefully very soon you're gonna see a few bombs. So let's go have some fun. On the ice now we had a really bad day yesterday so we're hoping to get into some biggies today uh, like we said yesterday afternoon big lakes big crappies so we're out on a fairly good sized lake today just gonna go try to chase them down and end this thing with a bang so let's see what happens Another solid one. God, these are pretty too. These are super gold, just like on bowstring. Get back down there, see if I can get them. I still got them sitting there. Stacking up some heaters right now. That pinhead is just doing work. Literally, they come up this one. Another solid eater on the pinhead. I know he said that a couple of times, but hey, when something works that good, just keep using it. Pink, after I catch this one, come here. Oh, oh yeah, look at this nice one. one dude. There we go, get down, get down, get go down. Right back down. So we're just roaming this basin. Catching some nice eaters right now. There's some big fish mixed in. Just roaming this mud flat. Pink needs a few to take home to his pop, so I'm gonna keep this one. And there's a solid five feet of them down here. So yeah. we're gonna try to go back to back to back on pinheads. Hopefully we can get a big one to beat them up. Solid one. Boom. <clears throat> Heck yeah. Another one on the pinhead. Back to back heaters right there. Fire right back down. They're just stacked right here. Bart just corked one and I think he's gonna get another one right here. 